Yeah. With the new link. Yeah, that's what you said. Okay, let me try that first. Okay, I know we're live now on um, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And we're just craving your indulgence. Just give us a few minutes before we start the conversation. Okay, I see you now. Um, okay, I'm adding you. Yes, there you are. Okay. I'm adding you. Welcome, everyone. Special, special welcome to my sister, my friend, Osai. Osai, thank you for taking time to do this. It means a lot to me. Uh, I'm not taking it for granted at all. I know I call you at very short notice, the same way I treat your Ghana twin, Belinda, but um, thank you guys for bearing with me. So Osai is the CEO of Act Foundation. Um, she's a um, best friend to many, and um, I call her my um, A to Z of Nigeria because Osai knows everyone, and anytime I'm looking for anyone or anything from Nigeria, I jump to Osai, and she's never failed. And why I particularly wanted to have this discussion with you, Osai, is because you are just... I don't, I've never seen anyone who has such a capacity and an ability to form uh, friendships that are meaningful and to just see the best in everyone. Even when I know they are exasperating you, you manage it so well. So when I thought about waters and wasters, you're such a waterer and you also know how to manage wasters that I couldn't think of a better person to have this conversation with. So that's why um, I brought you here this Sunday evening. So thank you. Thank you for joining us. And to everyone who's joining us on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, on YouTube or Twitter, thank you for making time to join us. And I'm looking forward to a really, really interesting conversation on knowing your waters and your wasters and um, knowing what to do with them. So, as I let's start. So why is it important for us to know First of all, okay, should we start with who the waters are and who the wasters are before we go into knowing how to manage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that. Hi, everyone. It's absolutely amazing to be here. And uh, thank you, Charlotte, for having me. As always, I love your conversation. Okay, I'm going to. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but it's muffled. Um, hold up. Okay, let's try. No, now I can't hear you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hold up. Today is just like... Oh, sorry, can you hear me? Okay. But you, you've gone quite, okay, let me try this again. The, the sound was interfering. Because I have two devices on. Okay, let's go on. Getsu, can you hear me? Just say yes. I can see some names. Can, can you? Oh, this thing is driving me nuts. The internet is acting up. Oh, gosh. Okay. If you can hear me, just go on. At least they can hear you on IG. And I'll try and figure out how to hear you. Find a way of balancing those two people out, uh, and, and also 
telling yourself who you want to be as a person as well because you also don't want even as you are telling people that they are wasting your time or they are watching you you also do not want to be a waster you want to be someone mm. that waters as well okay it's not only about i always think about other people i see all those people i want to separate them you know we start talking about haters you know talking about people like stopping me but you also have to look inwards and ask yourself who am i Am, am I a watcher or am I a waster? And once you realize who you are, of course, like any, anything else, you are just yourself. Um, sometimes you can be living as a woman. I do more than wasting and wasting people's time. You have to try, you know, so you also look at yourself. So the conversation is not only about other people, it's also about ourselves. So we should always think deep into who, who we are as individuals, who is Charlotte, who is society, and then also in the different sectors that we are in of work, family, friends, who are we and how do we speak and how do people see us and it's also important. So when we talk about wasters and watchers, watchers are people that influence you every day. In fact, most of them influence you. Uh, the two of them can influence you, but they yeah. can influence you then or positively. So do they inspire you or do they sap your energy? Those are the things that you have to, to ask. Um, okay, someone just said I have to adjust my camera so that <laughs> That that's a watcher. That's a watcher. <laughs> and she's always like very lovely. I always tell people, you can say something to me. I say, ah, sister, you really enjoy your article. Maybe you should do something. Okay, okay, okay. Is this better, Mommy? All right, darling. Thank you so okay. much for coming to this. Better. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So we're going to ask ourselves who influences us and don't. Um, do we inspire? Do we um, stop? Those are quite well. And once you look at it that, that way, Charlie, that's how you define it. It's very simple to define. Who stops my energy? Who waters my energy? Um, who inspires yeah. me? Who takes for me? How do I see them? Um, are they role models or are they negative influences to me? And who am I? Am I, neg am I a negative influence onto other people? I think let's 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 leave the let's leave the who I am first and just deal with you know it's very self-reflection is very hard for us. Let's just deal with the external. So I read and, and I like where you're going with this. I read this thing that says that supposedly you are the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with. And for me, that meant that it's really important who you surround yourself with, who you are allowed to be around you, who, um, and so those people, like you're saying, and in every group, they are waterers and they are wasters. So what you're saying is, how do those people around you affect you? If they influence you positively, then they are waterers. And if they yes. affect you negatively, then they are or sap your energy. Yes. So okay. So how, but do we always know what groups they belong to, or sometimes it's difficult to tell, especially when you call them friends? I mean, I think uh, just tell us, I think we, we kind of know, uh, but because so a lot of times there are people that we have known for so long or there are people that influence us in one way or the other um so you are, you are, you, you, you are kind of you, you tend to accept a lot of things from them but a lot of times when you go into your room ask yourself some questions you can tell if you have five friends you can tell who is waste is a, who is a waster and who is a watcher you can always tell um especially you know we all go through different seasons of our lives different challenges um different even successes you, even with success, you can tell who is watching. Because it's not it's not always, sometimes the people who are even closest to you are not always happy for your success. So that they should tell you that. A lot of times they are not always happy for your success. And um, I'm not one of those people to, to look for those kind of people or to say, oh, you know how you go online and say, I'm all my haters. So I just feel that it's not necessary. I think that it's great for you to know as an individual okay. so that... You are, you are the one that has to make the decision to remove yourself from that situation um, because they will always be there. Okay, hold up, you know? hold up. Yes. What if what if the, the yes. person you identify as a, as a waster 
is um, a sibling, a parent, a spouse. Because I think those, when it is even friends, it's it's easier for us to manage because you know, um, this friend is not happy when I, I do well. Or, you know, there are some friends that as soon as they see you, even your appearance, they must, it comes, the first thing that comes to them is a negative comment. So if you are not watchful, after a while when you're watchful, you can tell that, okay, this is supposed to be a friend, but I need to look at this again. But what do you do when it is a husband, a wife, a, a parent, a cousin, a sister, a brother, and you recognize that they are not good for your well-being, they are not good for your mental health, they don't wish you well, what do you do? Commissioner, what I think is the same thing I, I mentioned. And when I say remove yourself from the situation, it might not be a physical remover. It might be a mindset thing as well. Immediately you know that, okay, I have a sibling that continuously is not want. You know, we all have some down days where someone says something like, I beg John, it's mm -hmm. only you, and then you move on, and you now think, oh, no, that's not what I really meant. I actually do love my sister, and I, and I actually wish her well. Yeah. Sometimes maybe something is going wrong in your own circle at that moment. You, you kind of lash out at that person but when you see that it's a constant thing and it's continuous you have to consciously tell yourself that it's not necessary i, have, I can remove myself from this situation and when i be the mover it's not everything that you talk about you leave it alone and then you know sometimes Charlotte, when you're in a good place and you've had a lot of people four people i call you i call belinda say well done what you have done is fantastic by the time one person comes and tells me it's not great you don't really care anymore because in your mind you say, oh, well, Charles, I mean, I've had like four of my sisters telling me it's great. So this one person, yeah, I know she, and this is she's anyway, so I'm just going to fash it. Because, you, are, you know, you are kind of, you are, you are fed off on good. I know when you feed off on a lot of good, it's a bit easier when that 10% comes in and wants to down you because you have enough hmm. energy to fight it. So you might not be able to come out of the situation in the physical but your mindset, you know that this person is not going for you when something happens. So you're not you're not quick to tell them. So you can wait for five days, six days after to mention it if need be. Uh, but you give it as much time as possible. And and, and, and crowd yourself with the, the watchers, the ones that will remind you that you've done a great job, the ones that will remind you if you have challenges that yes, this thing go well, but we believe that the next one will come. You know, so once you do that, and you surround yourself with that. Yeah. So you, when you are in a place, um, Charlotte, and you put something around you, even if someone comes in and sits in, you already have a barricade. The barricade makes it easier for you. That's when the person sits in, it's just, it becomes, by the time they sit in, it bounces it off. Like really yes, it becomes really not. It's really I get like you. Vapors. And with vapors, it's easy for you to just kind of move to the side and say, well, it's vapor, it's going to pass me by. Okay. And it will pass by, but you have to be conscious about it. I think we're going to have a fuller discussion really on how to manage the, the wasters, which is what we're kind of yes. delving into. But I, I still think that there are times when people do not even recognize who a waterer is and who a waster is. So for instance, we, we talk about criticism, but it doesn't really mean that everyone who criticizes you is, 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 um, is a waster. When I think about, let's say, a figure like Samson in the Bible, yes, I, I, and they talk about when he's going to marry the Philistine woman, his friends are there, and I'm, I, I, I'm always wondering that what kind of friends? Yes. Even, I mean, even he's constantly going back to Delilah. You, you have to start yes. wondering at what point were you going to figure out that this person was looking for your destruction? So, point is. Sometimes your waters may actually be people who criticize you. But of yeah. course, it may be that the, you would know that the criticism is coming from a place of love. So yes, yeah. it's not to say that everyone who says anything negative about you is, is a waster. Yeah. So I think it's really important to um, recognize your waters. And I was just thinking through some of the relationships in the Bible and how even as we speak, um me and you are similar in the sense that it's a lot of female friends but i think it's also important for people to recognize that the people who water you don't necessarily have to be um like elizabeth and mary an older woman who is 
mentoring. That is possible, but it's not always the case. You had a yeah. Mordecai and Esther. It can be a male figure and a younger female. Yes. You had yes. David and Jonathan. It can be a peer. Exactly. Um, and then, of course, you have the negative ones like um, when, when Solomon was no longer king and his son Adonijah took over. Or was it Rehoboam exactly. or somebody? And then exactly. he, when the people were complaining that there was hardship, his friends came and said, oh, if you even tell them, if you are nice to them, these people, they'll give you problems. You need to show that you are tough. And they gave him advice that basically led to the destruction of Solomon's legacy. Or you have like um, Amnon, who when he wanted to rape his sister Tamar, it was a friend who gave him the idea that, oh, pretend you're sick. Let your father tell her to come and make food for you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you can have waters who are your peers, who are older, who are younger. And you can also have waters who are yes. wasters who are the same. But I wonder, do you have any experience of like um, a watering relationship that was unusual or a waster relationship that did not fit the popular mold of what a water or a waster should be? I mean, let me, let me give um, a, a water. You see, people expect watchers to be people that are, of course, maybe have more influence over you. Yeah. Um, so they speak uh, with a place of influence, yeah. but it's not necessarily always so. Um, I'll give an example. I have an assistant who I feel is a watcher completely. Yeah. yeah. Because it's not a normal relationship that we have, but I mean, I know for a certain that she's one of those people. She, you know, she comes or she looks out. She she checks things, and and very very clear about if I do things wrong. So someone walks out of my office and she thinks that I'm, I I the conversation did not go as well as she should. She comes in and says, you know, there's a way she says it. That so she, ma she manages you, that. yeah. Manages it, you know. And as, as far as I'm concerned, that's a, a one try. It might not be. I should be the one that should be watching her. Which yeah. I can tell that she does hundred percent more than I do on that part. Then you have some wasters that you expect, like a mentor that you expect to be a watcher, and then you have one of them that has come to completely over and over again sucked everything from you, and it's helping people to suck it as well. So consciously you think to yourself, I worked somewhere before, and I had a, a person that was, of course. Um, almost like a mental figure. Mm -hmm. I felt to myself was a great person. And then I went one day to uh, my boss and the person said, this is the person that wants to destroy you. So you have to be careful. Wow. And I was completely taken aback about it. Is, is, it not that, is it not that they start out as a mentor, but what I've realized is when, when most people are dealing with other people and they start out, oh, I want you to succeed and they're supporting you to succeed. However, mentally, they have set a limit to how successful you should be. They want you to be, yes. Yes. They may not even realize it, but they have. As soon as you cross that limit, they become resentful because it's like, I wanted you to succeed, but I didn't want you to succeed to this level. Yeah. And that's when the relationship changes and becomes toxic. So I guess what you're trying to say is a water can also become a waster, depending. It, it, it can. It, it can. From the beginning, that we have to be very conscious and make a decision ourselves. I mean, the person is still someone that I talk to. I, I, I didn't, I didn't completely cut the cut person up, out yeah. of my life. Yeah, because I, I was sensible enough to realize that it was also someone that was important, necessary enough to keep those. But I also became sensible to not take a lot of the advice, and also be very, I, I was very careful to remove myself from the relationship in that okay. sense of the way. Um, but you, see, you don't always have somebody that will tell you that be careful. Um, so you have to, and I, you know what? When the person said this, I actually realized um, that really there was there were a lot of signs. But you know, I mentioned earlier. Yeah, but you ignore it. Yeah. Because, yes, you ignore them because you feel to yourself, ah, oh, this person is close to me. Yeah. I don't want this to happen. Then you now you, you you almost want to apologize for the kind of behavior the person is doing, and and you must remember that. And, and I'm still going back to Charlotte also talking about fact that you must know who you are and realize that you're more important than that relationship and i'll leave it as yeah. that okay so um one of the keys to knowing who a watcher is especially when it comes to um friendship 
is also yeah. being clear about what true friendship is. What have, like they say about the, the American currency, the, 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 the agencies, the law enforcement agencies are not shown this is a fake currency. They are taught what an original currency looks like so that when you see a fake, then you know what the fake is. So I think part of the, the confusion in our minds so that even in trying to decide whether somebody is a waste or a water, especially when it comes to friendship, critical family members, I think we, we, we clue in on that very easily. How to manage yeah. them is a different thing, maybe more difficult. But when it comes to friendship, what does true friendship look to you? Or what should it be? And I say it in all honesty, you are a phenomenal friend. Phenomenal friend, yes, phenomenal friend. What 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 should a true friendship look like? I mean, for me, Charlotte, for me, friendship is clear. It's someone that I mean, regardless of any situation, good, bad, ugly, has your back. Um, and I, I when I tell people this, people think I, I don't really. I'm very very clear. If I enter a relationship with a person, except it becomes something that you want to kill my children or my father, my father, all those things. You know, I mean, I'm always in it for the long haul because I feel that there's some things that the person has done or has shown me that, and I, I, I also think it's very spiritual for me. I feel that people that become my friends 30 years, 40 years, very spiritual, that God brings them into my life for a certain purpose. Mm -hmm. And so I take it from that point of view. So, I'm, so a lot of times I use Christianity and people say, ah, why be that person? I say, look, there's a reason that the person is in my life. So yeah. because I know what it is, then I, I get to be. But true friendship hmm. is someone that has your back. No matter what, they watch out for you. Um, they can ensure that you're not in danger. They are there. They might not be there physically. I have friends that I don't see often. But once you see them, you know. That so for you, it's it's really, it's a, it's, the way you're describing friendship is almost like you're talking about marriage. Yeah. It's a covenant relationship. It is about covering your friend's nakedness, really, at all times. Completely. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's always having someone's best interest. That exactly. That's it. That's it. I always use that first Corinthians 13 word. Love is patient. Friendship is patient. Friendship is kind. Mm. It does not envy. It does not boast. Does let's stop at, let's stop at, it does not envy. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's stop. <laughs> that's that's the one that is the most breached. <laughs> but anyway, keep going. Yeah, I, I totally get you. But but that for that for me is exemplified in the Bible truly by David and Jonathan. Yes. I mean, we talk a lot about David, but I thought Jonathan was a pretty amazing human being because. Jonathan put David's interest so far ahead of himself yes. that he was willing to support David against his father. He yes. knew when to give him warnings to escape. And I always wondered about um, Jonathan's father that if anybody should have hated um, David, ah, it should have been Jonathan because it was his throne that David was taking. Rather, the father was now chasing <laughs> David all over the place. And the person who whose throne was being taken really was the one supporting was supporting them. So I think that's a real, and that's Jonathan why that yes, it's covenant, and that's why David even went to look out for Jonathan's son yeah. and to yeah, make sure. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because so I get in, you. In the long term, in the long term of things, uh, when you have that kind of friendship, you realize to yourself that you know it it backs you to is forever. I mean, of course, we know that some things fall by the wayside. Things happen. We know that things happen, but when you put it in your mind from the beginning that there's no envy, there's no possible. No, but isn't that also a test of friendship? To ask yourself that which of my friends, if something happened to me, would go and look out for my children's interests? Or my parents' interests. Yeah, but I also feel to myself that Shallow, that every friend is there has different capacities as well. Okay. So I, I will not I, I can't so there are different friends, categories and levels of friendship. Thank you. Very key point. And everybody has their capacity. Yeah. There's some friends I know for a setting. If it's my child, I'm okay. My mother, I'm okay. There's some friends for work. I know that I don't have any problem. They will back me up anytime, any day. And I know that they all have because we are all flawed. 
we all have our weaknesses, we all have our strengths. That's important. Yeah. And that's another problem also, Shalom, because we put a lot on people and expect a lot. Our expectations are yeah. very high. Not, yeah. not, you know, it's not like there's anything wrong with it, but because we have very high expectations, when someone does not look for your child, when person comes to, I have my friend, my, my son has come to Accra now, and I'm expecting that Belinda is going to check up on him for the five days he's there. Yes. And you all know that Belinda will. But I have another friend that that's not who she is. She will call him and maybe get the, someone to pick him up from the airport, but she might not check up on him every single day mm -hmm. to make sure that he's eating and he's fine and all that. So they are all different. But that doesn't mean that they love me any less. They're still watching. I get you. On different, yes. So they it's also them. about appreciating and accepting your friends for who they are. Yeah. Because Christ accepts us for who we are. He does. He sees us simply as who. You see, as long as they are not wasters, they are not people that want to, they are not harm your child. Yeah. Patient. Yes, they have all those things. They, all those things I'm talking about in First Corinthians. They, they see them. Once they have that, every other thing becomes normal. You don't even mind people who go and check every single day. What you are caring for, that they, they actually do care about you, and you know it. And they care about everything that concerns you. And they know it. You see, when you have, I'll give you an example, Charlotte. Someone now sends, I mean, well, everybody has, I mean, you have scars on your back. I do. We all, but people see, we, they don't see it all the time. We always see the, the, the look, I've come to, I'm on this page, I've done my makeup, I've put my nice wig. I even got green glasses to go with my wig. You know, but nobody saw me. You're yeah, watching, baby. It's all green. I want the glasses, I mean, I the glasses that would be on Nobody. <laughs> hours before they've not seen the sacrifices the challenges i've gone through my my friends that are watchers have seen it a waster does not see so ah that's a key point that, why is osai why does osai have everything why is everything going well for her they've forgotten the eight years or the ten years that have been have been challenged and i've been getting the stripes on my back they've forgotten it they don't even know it because they're not watchers they are wasters. They don't care about it. What they are concerned about now is seeing me and saying, and she won't wear a green booboo. And she's wearing green glasses. And looking who does she think she is? And, yeah, who does she think she is? And she's just enjoying her life. Everything is going well. You know, they forget. You know, they, they don't see it. So you must understand that those are not watchers. They are wasters. So when they do those mm. things, it doesn't affect you so badly. Because you know that they are not watchers of your life. You focus on your own name and bring the watchers into your life. The wasters, when they start doing these things, including family members, including the ones that you think are close, including your pastor. Some pastors ah, are yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Some pastors are, are some pastors are wasters. Are wasters. <laughs> they are wasters. Most you know that they, 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 they are not part of the journey of life. What they say makes no difference to you. You just... You move it, it you, I, I move on, I move on very quickly. I laugh about it, I call Belinda, I will laugh and say, ah, light has gone in because you understand. I will say, hey, <laughs> Belinda, they've come in here. You know, they've forgotten that for five years, 10 years, this is what I was doing. Yeah. Nobody knows what I did two hours ago in Belinda. Nobody knows what was under my hair. They don't yeah. know what kind of what I was wearing. They see me now and they think this is it. But they don't know that the stripes that we are bearing on our backs, we end it. You know, so that's when you know that it's only a watcher hmm. that we know the stripes that you have on your back because they are your people. I totally get you, but I think that then the mistake usually comes from us in not in not recognizing what category they belong to. Yes. And then you you bring a waster into your life and treat the waster as a oh, watcher. So, so one of the things That's for me. One of the things, the way I usually rationalize it to myself is there are some friends, and I'm using the word friends very loosely, if they come to my house, we will sit on the porch. There are some friends who would come into the living room. There are some friends who just stroll in and go into the kitchen and start opening fridge and whatever. You don't need to see yourself. No, I, I don't even have to be home. There are some who can go upstairs, enter my room, enter closet. Exactly. It's different exactly. levels of intimacy. And so you must exactly. set the boundaries for how far exactly. some people can go exactly. into your life. Yes. And recognize 
they are not bad people, but this one is just an envious person. That is how the person was born. This one is just petty. She can't help herself. Just leave her in her, in her corner to be her petty self and whine about. But you see, what I've also noticed, um, and it is really true that who you surround yourself with determines who you are. There was a point in my life where I, because of physical proximity, I was close to somebody who maybe ordinarily I should not have been close to. And I realized that every time we sat down, this person always talked about other people. And this person did this, and this person did that. And, and so after a while, I had to call myself to order that, that what, 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 you're not growing in this relationship. You're not getting anything out of it. This is constant talk about other people. It wasn't um, enriching my life in any way. And so I had to take a decision to call, you know, like just pull myself back and, and um, create some distance in that relationship. And I realized that when I kind of push the person out of my life, not that close, you know, there are people, oh, hello, hello, how are you? My life became better because it, and it was becoming toxic. Not that the person did anything negative to me, but it's just the way the person yeah. spoke about other people and the constant talking about what other people were up to. I found it very, um, very frustrating. Yeah. So I don't know if you've had any experience like that. <laughs> I mean, you do. We, we do have experiences. I mean, we all, I mean, if you talk to, I mean, all the women here, you find out that sometimes you, you have to ask yourself, like, mm, no, this is not supposed to be how this relationship And even the men, even the and men, even Samson's the, friends. Uh, mm. Men and women, you yeah. know, but sometimes even in an office relationship as well, yeah. you find that you start because you see the person every day, the person drops clothes, you start inviting them, you now realize. No, we're not really on the same um, brain. We don't. Uh, let me, we just uh, please let me just stay away from that. But that's the same reason why you have to also know what you are looking for, what kind of networks you are looking for, what kind of relationships is important to you mm. at a given time. And of course, sometimes those office work uh, relationships, you know, that like you need them for networking, you need them to move yourself to the next level. So you have to now know how to balance it out and say, okay, I'll keep this person as a friend. If you notice, I mentioned the mentor. Yeah, um, I'm still a mentor, I'm still someone that is very I'm, I'm close to, uh, but I'm very careful. About but you manage the relationship now, yes. and the influence. And of course, we all grow. Exactly, we all also all grow. So you now know. That, I mean, it's not anybody that just trying to be. I mean, we all have family members that we wish we could get rid of, or we have. I mean, they are still there. We see them in every meeting. Okay, I'm 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 happy you brought up growth because that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. Um, yeah, especially with old friends, the ones who've known you from primary school and you started work together and all that. Sometimes you realize that either physical distance or what's the other, it's not, it's not always physical. Okay, so two of my closest friends live in London and Geneva. Yeah. I don't talk to them every, we can go weeks without, even months without talking. But I never feel a sense of distancing distance is really the issue. But I just think that is it possible to outgrow a friend? Because there are some friends sometimes I think there's just nothing in common. And um yeah, the one even struggling, like, did I do anything wrong? Did some and you find out you, you think about it and you can't put your finger on anything that went wrong. You've just grown apart. It, is that part of the cycle or I'm being I'm being a waster myself? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's part of the circle. I mean the circle we must all accept and be like that. Like, it okay. just happened. Um because all of us now, I mean if you had friends from secondary school for Christ's sake, and they're your closest friends in secondary school, we have all gone through different up, down, sideways, push. Some of them, you know, with loss. You know, everyone has gone through different things. And then we must also remember that not everybody can you know, accept some things and take it in a legal way. So you they, they, you might have gone 10 steps forward, 20 steps back, 10 steps forward, and they are thinking to themselves that, ah, 
they've only gone to two steps. You know, so we are all at different times. And they might not also, you know, some people will, will might be like that. And they understand that, yes, you, you've gone through a lot, but they don't mind. And they are willing to adjust themselves. So what are you going through, Charlotte? What can we? What can I do to help you get over these things? Or what can we do to make sure that we can still have a conversation? Well, some people don't grow. Charlotte, some people do not want to grow. Yeah. The conversation that, that's also... Years ago. And knowledge is so important. They can still be having the same conversation or the same quarrel you were quarreling when you were investing in <laughs> They still want to be quarreling it now. We are about to have grandchildren. Exactly. I mean, are you joking? I actually you have, not about to have. I have grandchildren, and I'm like, this is exactly. this ain't taking me anywhere. <laughs> we're not going anywhere with this. <laughs> And this person said this, I'm like, I don't even remember the person you're talking about. I don't even remember. <laughs> I'm so bad when with that. Those situations, forget it. It's, it's, it just cannot work. And that's where you have to now just manage the person. Of course, when you go to all uh, uh, meetings, you play with them, you laugh, you know, talk about the shared again, and then move on. Yeah. But I think uh, I think what's up, and I'm going to come to, we talked about what a true friendship looks like. We're talking about what a waste that looks like. But I think what's up, <laughs> what's up is really good at helping you manage friendship there are some people you just forward send forwarded messages to <laughs> and you can be forwarding back and forth <laughs> for two years and there's no hello how are you but <laughs> we're just keep we're just pretending this is working <laughs> we're pretending there's a friendship <laughs> so what's up really helps but you know even with that you 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 will know that the person is not a good try I've also had some friends who forward stuff to me and I start asking myself, how is this person even my friend? Because if you're really my friend, you should know better than to forward me this kind of crap. You will you just know that because when you have a, a, a true friend, I mean, by the time, you, by the time I don't hear from a friend for some time or yeah. someone post something, even if it's not a friend that can go home to my bedroom and it's still a washer, there's some yeah. washers that sit at the porch yeah. because you're building. Mm -hmm. And the person puts post some, something about something that is dear to them, even a, a comment, and you don't reply. I see this person has started again. Forget it. <laughs> Once you reply, say, Are you okay? Is everything okay? Even if you don't talk to the person up from and the person, I'm just going through a bad day. So don't worry. You know, God is with you. Right? Pass, yeah. You can move on from. Yes, you know that that is a watery split, but is a watery point. It might be at stage one. You know, there's so many stages of going yeah. as well. So maybe our basic stage, you're not, you don't even know the person's house, but you have a close, you feel to yourself that there's something good about this person. And they have some of those things I'm talking about in first Corinthians. Okay. How about, okay, talking about success. How about <laughs> those friends who, there's no beef, there's no issue. They just hear that, oh, Osai is CEO of Ark Foundation. And for them, the friendship ends that day. Yeah. What do you have to say about those? And I think everybody has, you may not notice them, and it may not be you being CEO. It may be wedding announcements. Friendship ends that day. It may be um, spouse getting a promotion. Friendship ends that day. Yeah. What? Who are those ones? <laughs> so those people are not your people now. If they're not, <laughs> even if they, they pretended for 10 years, they're not your people. I mean, I'm just going through one of those things right now. Mm. Okay? I just had a baby. Mm -hmm. and everyone, Congratulations, and I, darling. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I know people that, I mean, I, I, I'm thinking to myself, I mean, for Christ's sake, why are we having this conversation? It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, if all you have to do is just say, send a message, congratulations, I wish you well. Why are you so angry that somebody is done something? You want to know the in total of the. I want to know what happened. Why is they want to know the DNA know? of the baby. Yeah, I think it's myself. I mean, you want me to send me the child's DNA, you know, send me the results of. You know, what do you want from me? Those are not your people. And, when, and that's why I don't want you to spread because not everybody is your friend. They're not your people. The way, the way I have managed to rationalize it, because it can be very painful if you take it seriously i think it was bishop td jakes or somebody who described them as couples and that when you are building and depending on how high you are, the building is going to go up you are going to need scaffolds and that's how you see yourself so you are a very you are, you are a skyscraper 
And so if you're going to build 20 floors up, you're going to need very high scaffolds. But when the building is done, or a floor is done, the scaffolds would come down. It must come down. Yeah, so I just take them as scaffolds. I'm like, okay, so um, this person, their time in my life is... Scaffold, scaffold one is, is is over, please. Let's move on. Maybe now we need a new paint job or something. But yeah. it, it's not every friendship that is meant to last forever. If you don't recognize their purpose, that they came for a season, it will be painful. It's yes, but from the beginning, as we are all growing, as we are all seeing these things, just know that they are not your people. Simple. Yeah, yeah. And the ones that are your people are your people. Yeah. So once they are not your people, it's okay. And I think you should actually be grateful that they are leaving. Because they are showing that they are not your people. Rather than keeping keeping them around is actually the more dangerous thing. God bless you. Yeah. Why are you wasting your time? And then you see, Charlotte, we must realize that life, it doesn't last, we, we don't know how long we have. We, we, we have conversations today. Thank you, Benita. Your people are your people. Your people, that's we all. Have conversations today. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's going to happen on the 6th of June 2021. Mm -hmm. So do the best that you can. Enjoy being present in your today. And the ones that are not present, leave them alone. It's okay. It's going to mm -hmm. be fine. We're going to be okay. So we don't have enough time. So if the, if you love somebody and you want the relationship to be great, you work at it. Because really, building relationships take time too. It takes a lot of effort. And I understand why people say, oh, I gave it 10 years of my time. And then this person, and I just realized that this person is a, a waster. And has, is wasting my time. I said, you can see the signs. Like any relationship, like who they married, you can see the signs. Um, sometimes before we go marry someone, we already know the signs that this person And we ignore, we choose to ignore it. And then when the consequences we come, we start complaining it's through. Hard. We choose to ignore it and everything. Okay. But so since you brought up that topic, before we even define where we start is, don't give me that eye. What happens when you have married a waster? If you haven't married a waster, of course, if you are wise, after this conversation, you run very far away, put some physical distance, emotional distance, um, use the block button on your phone, which is my favorite button on my phone. But what happens when you have already married a waster? Hmm. This type only goes on my prayer and fasting. <laughs> So yeah. that's, I'm not a marriage counselor, but let me just tell you what I think. Like any other relationship, you try to make it work and find ways to say, okay, this person is a waste that is not, not, it's not doing me any good. It's a constant it's drain. Constantly draining everything from me, my work, my, she doesn't want me to, to succeed. So that's a bit difficult. So sometimes, um, some human beings do change, some. But a lot of times, very few. And that's why I said. So that's why I said sometimes you go to. You know, you but you do know that change, people. change can be for the better or for the worse. <laughs> so let's be careful. When I, when I some people change, I'm talking about it both ways. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have to. I'm, I'm going back to this thing to say, you have to now go back again to yourself and ask yourself what you want. And sometimes some people can take that with and manage hmm. What? Not everybody has that capacity. Wester should marry wasters, so I think. To, ah, some people, some people just put themselves in one kind of, you know, find their own focus. You know, they remove their lane from the best lane. I'll yeah. go to another lane. I just, I just focus on something else. Because they, they know how to manage that. They don't, those, you know, some of us here, I say, hey, my heart's broken and all those things. Some people yeah, some can create that themselves. emotional barrier. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, mm. I just, you know, put a barrier around themselves, focus on their work, focus on their children and all that. But not everybody has that capacity. That's I true. must know that once is a waster, and the person is a waster. A, That's their job description. Very, very, it never changes. Yes. It's very difficult to change. Very, yeah. very difficult. But you see, let me go to the spiritual time kind of things. And I'm not, when it comes to relationship, I'm very careful about that. I've seen changes occur in some people. But it's also the person must want that change to happen as well. It's really not your responsibility. It's almost going to be difficult for you 
as a person to make that change. The person must realize that I can let me let me change because there must be good at the end of the you can see some light at the end of the tunnel, but it's very it's very weird that we as individuals be able to do it ourselves. Hmm. Someone said my name is not endurance. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's patience. <laughs> <laughs> no, look okay. out for the signs before it starts. Look out for the signs. Okay. Right? And so you can avoid it. Before we really delve into what a waster really should look like, so at least we can all learn to identify, because sometimes it's very subtle and you may not really see yeah. it. Yeah. Let's still talk about the watering. So, and you did say something that for me was very profound that you have to recognize that the people around you have different capacities. So, and some people are just naturally more loving, more generous than other people. So don't expect the same level of um, giving. And I don't mean as in um, physical gifts. It's sometimes it's even just yes. generosity of spirit from everyone. I think one thing, it, it also really applies to you. And you tried to allude to that earlier about knowing yourself. So isn't it important that even for you, you know what waters you, how regularly you need to be watered. And sometimes it's not just the, about the, the people. It's if you don't know what you need, um, you need to be, how do I put it? You need to know what waters you, how regularly you need watering, what kind of relationships water you. And Stella keeps saying that you're far from your mic and that she can't hear you, but I can hear you very well. Stella, it's your yeah. phone, it's your phone. I know that will annoy her. Okay, but... <laughs> <laughs> but she keeps saying, oh, Sai is far from her mic. <laughs> and she says, Charlotte, with exclamation mark, tell Osai she's far from the mic. I can barely hear her. It's your phone, Stella, but hey, who am I? Mm -hmm. Let me behave myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so is it important to know what kinds of relationships water you? And um, how regularly you yourself, you need watering? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really <laughs> interesting, Sharon, because that's why, I mean, I, I tried to start the conversation from that level, but you yeah. said we should wait. Mm -hmm. Because one thing I've realized, um, in, of course, all of us are different levels of works of life, it's different. All of us have gone through different things. But what I've realized that is most important is you knowing who you are first, knowing what is important to, to you. you. Because sometimes, Charlotte, a friend will think, or a watcher will think they are watching you, but that's not the kind of water you need for that particular season. Mm, give and an example. It, it now creates a lot of hinges and, you know, a lot of problems in the relationship people have. Yes. And it can be even a business relationship. Yes, and it happens a lot. So you must know. And the only thing, the, the relationships that last a long time, in terms of even friendships or, or mentorships and all those kind of things, and people that are willing to, you know, realize that the journey of life is different. We are all, today is a round peg, next minute is a square one, and we are willing, because of the kind of the way we see this particular person, we are willing to turn and, and move. Uh, I said to myself, at this time, Charlotte is not looking for someone to tell her that everything is okay. She's looking for someone to tell her, no, Charlotte, you can't do this at this moment. We need to push ourselves even more. We can't do it this way. We need to do this. We need to change yeah. that. That was the reason for this time. And in another five weeks, it might be something different. So you must also know, first of all, who what you, you need. Yeah. I must know what, what I need. What am I looking for? first and once i do that it's easier for me to know who is wasting and who is watering and you see i can also always tell someone that look it's not what i need at this time can you just help me do this can you help me check up on, on this and you see the more you water a person and the more that relationship grows it's like grass on the field that you're watering and charlotte i mean you i mean you are you are the garden expert you know all these plants things and you see a plant immediately can tell you say don't sprinkle yeah. You know, poor. Do it every three days. No, exactly. Do it every six days. Yeah. You can tell because at every single time you know that every flower on that tree is different. Mm -hmm. This bouquet is different. This plant is different. We are all very different. Very yeah. Different. Yes. But once I know that I want to be a watcher, I don't want to waste people's time. But I don't. 
I feel I'm always I always say it over and over again. We don't have that much time. So why do I want to waste people's time? I go and spoil their life or put something. So I want to be a watcher. So consciously in my mind, I'm careful to ask. I am careful about relationships. I become even more empathetic and more and more listening. Not listening in terms of just what a person says. The underlying thing of why the person is doing what is doing, yeah. and I, I, I become more careful. And when I do that, sort of, I even as a side, I even become even more empathetic about myself. I start asking my, I don't want that. No, 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 no. that's not going to work because I, I, I'm putting myself on a pedestal that Osai deserves better, better than this, and mm. I don't want it. Well, you know, so those are the things that once you know who you are, then it makes it easier. That doesn't mean that we're not going to have situations. And, I mean, Charlotte, you know me now. I have many down times, and, and, and you know, you will call and say, Are you okay? Are you doing okay? We all go through our down times. But that's why you must all have also other watchers around you. Because when that grass, they can see to themselves that you need that additional manure, you need that additional water, you know, a fertilizer. They are willing to yeah. help you bring that fertilizer to your home. They're not going to tell you, go and buy the fertilizer outside. They can come to your house in the morning before you even wake up and the fertilizer is already in your grass and you're fine and it's not that extra thing that you're looking for but, but you must be willing to know what you're looking for in the first place a lot of times as women we, we tend not to want to, to know and then when we even know we are afraid to speak it up and say if i was i said something to um, um, the other day she asked for someone i said i said i sent the person out of my life and she laughed <laughs> you evicted the person <laughs> i was very clear i said i sent out of my life because i knew that stella says i don't water her stella you know that's not true i have to rebuke i have to refute this publicly <laughs> i am a waterer <laughs> can you imagine embarrassing me on my own ig like that i don't call it her daughter because i said it to her i don't want to call her daughter i don't want to call her daughter i don't want to call her daughter oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's the joy of I mean uh, of life and knowing what you know then it makes it a bit easier to yeah. manage the relationship, build it because relationships also take time. They do. They do. And and it's it's yes. like you're saying, it's it's very sacrificial. And I think that yes, brings exactly. up a point you had made earlier that it's not enough to just want to be watered. You also have to be a waterer. Right. And if you are not generous with yourself, why do you expect other people to be generous with generous. you? Yeah. I have two male friends. <clears throat> Both of them don't even live in, they don't even live in Ghana. Denise says what? She's abusing me too. These are what trends who are becoming wasters publicly. <laughs> they are becoming wasters publicly. <laughs> <laughs> we rebuke the spirit in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Revert to your watering. Let's <laughs> see. I say, Osaya, I love you. You're making sense. That's supposed to make me jealous. I don't even care. I love Osaya too. She's making sense. <laughs> but my thing is, <clears throat> so you must also have that generosity of spirit. It's not just about receiving it. And we should also remember the mirror principle. Maybe sometimes what we are getting out of other people is what we are getting into them. But I have these two male friends, and why I mention them is because they don't even live in Ghana. One comes in and goes. It's not Ghanaian. The other one is Ghanaian that doesn't live in Ghana. But what I've noticed about them is there are two people who, when they sit with me or they pick up the phone and they say, how are you doing? I can never give them a flippant answer. I find that when they ask that question, I immediately start telling them, every deep thing that i'm going through that maybe some <clears throat> as i'm talking to them is when i'm addressing it or admitting it to myself but i've come to realize that it's because i they, they speak from such a place of um there's a lot of love there's no judgment and it is very genuine they, they i i can sense that they truly care so when they ask me how are you i can't just say well i'm fine and ending that no i have to respect their affection for me and pause and really tell them what I'm going through. So yeah. for me, it's always been, I've, and I've always, sometimes I ask myself that, am I this loving to them? Mm. And they've made me a better friend because now I, sometimes I get up and I just 
check on them and I go to the same level of death. It's not just how you hide the family hides what no, I want to know how are you really doing? But I don't know how to put it, but it's not um it's very easy to ask how are you and let it go and I just move on. Yes. yes. But when the person really wants to know how you're doing, I think you can sense it. And mm. you you feel just the question itself makes you feel very loved. And yeah. you know that you're in a place where there's no judgment. You're not mm. going to judge anything you've done. They just want to make sure that you are okay and they're willing to support you. And so for me, they have, um, how do, they have affected me positively because I want to be that kind of friend to everyone I call a friend. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's the beauty of um, uh, of, of the First Corinthians thing um, yeah. that I read before, because it makes you a better person. You see the truth about yourself, I'm Charlotte. Once you are watered, it's easy for you to water. Because mm. except you are just from the pits of hell, you know, you are just one of those bad people that we don't want to be seen or this. No, those they kill, steal, and destroy people. We know them. Yes, you kill, you destroy, you finish yeah. them. No, no, no. Because you find out that once people are loving towards you, once they are not proud, they don't, they're not rude, they're not self-seeking, you also want to become a better person as yeah. well. And you say to yourself, ah, if someone is so kind to me, why can't I be kind to other people? Yes. And then you also, and that's what that's the beauty of watering. And it's so biblical. And so it's that's why I mentioned it's a com it's a complex relationship. I mean, for you to actually be in a friendship with someone for 30 years, 20 years, and you guys are still building, still going, is because, because, Charlotte, it's not every time that someone is on a high. I mean, yeah. you spoke this afternoon, you know that. It's not every time that someone is on a high. We have our down days. Yes. That, yeah. you know, you need that person to just send you a message that, ah, is everything okay? Send me something. Let me see what you look like. I just, maybe I'll send you a silly joke and enough laugh about it. And then you find out that you also will do that, maybe not for Charlotte, but for the next person. Yeah. And as we want to, God waters us. Iron sharpens water, iron. Water somebody else. Yeah, iron sharpens iron. Happens. Yeah. And that's the way it's supposed to be. And that's why we have to kill uh, the waster one, the, the, the waster spirit, and realize to ourselves that it's really not necessary for us to be envious, for us to be. We easily wanted to pull other people down. Okay, you've started, you've started identifying the waster, and I'm happy you said spirit. Some are real spirits, so. <laughs> so you said you shouldn't be envious. You shouldn't want to pull other people down. What else? How do you identify the waster? Someone that, you know, is almost like spreading evil. And they, sometimes they don't even know it's evil that they are spreading. You know, and they are, it is, they are, you want to run away from them. It, it, they just, there's something about them. You know, so, of course, look at the first Corinthians. Anybody that does not show love is boastful, ego, pride, and wants to always just find the wrong in you. And, you know, and I mean, why do you call somebody on the phone and the person gives you good news? I say, hey, is that all? I beg, even uh, uh, was I yesterday, she was better than your own. I have thinking wow. to myself, are you joking? Are you for real? I mean, there's no point. Why we? Why do we want to be that person? Why? Okay, so you hold up. You know, we've been talking for about an hour now, even though we started late. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> so for all those who have joined us, I see some people have joined us from... France, from Lome, from Germany, from the US, from Ghana, from Nigeria. I just wanted to welcome all of you again and to thank you for joining us in this very, very hot, hot, hot conversation about knowing your 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 wasters and your waters and how to 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 manage both. And really, we're gonna to get to that. It's about managing both because you cannot always eliminate both, and both need management. So you were saying you were telling us how to identify who a waster is and i read this quote he said some people are investments other people are bills and you should know the difference <laughs> <laughs> so now we're trying to we're trying to identify the bills the liabilities so they are usually envious they usually don't celebrate um they're not happy when you share good news um, they, they, they are constantly wanting to put you 
and others down. I think sometimes they may not even yes. be doing it to you, but they're doing it to or talking negatively about practice. other people to you. Yeah, okay. Yes, constantly doing that. They are not that, they're, they're self seeking. Wanting That's to it. To be all about them. Even when you are going through something, it always comes back to who they are. So they want you to always do, mm. they want you to give, give, and give, and give, and give, and give. They, someone said they will not patronize you. <laughs> That's true. That's true. They will go to everybody's business except yours. That's true. Yes. And it's best Mona says they encourage you to be frivolous with your money. Of course, you are getting poorer. Yeah? Yes. They are easily angered. You know, every little thing makes them, they keep records of wrong. Yes. I dated a guy like that. I ran away. I couldn't marry him because he would tell me who offended him in kindergarten. I couldn't even remember who was my mate in kindergarten. He remember, and this one did this to him in class three. I'm like, hey, you remember that? This one will never forget anything I do. No, but, but hold up. Before before you run away from them, isn't there also a part that um maybe it's because they really do feel inadequate or they feel small, and so they think that if they make you small, then they, they feel bigger. It may be coming from a place of inadequacy. You know, you're sounding like, okay, if you want to carry this cross, go ahead and carry it. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. No matter how hard you try to put them down, they they, they cross the stand up again. Yeah. 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 Belinda is a wicked girl. She said, Waka pass with your inadequacy. You have to be kind. Kind. Belinda, I'm teaching you kindness. I don't think it's working. It's working. We need new notes. <laughs> but you know, some of them, you, you just don't need the extra stress. Yeah. Because we're, we're, we're already stressed. Better is key. Yeah. We are, we're all dealing with so many things. And, and especially if it's not someone that's like family that you need to try for. Because to manage, yeah. Yes, to manage, and you know, it's not like God has, you know, some people that God wake up in the night, this is your cross, carry it. No, God not send that kind of thing. You know, you can pray from them from a distance. It's not everybody's cross. <laughs> I like that. Pray for them from a distance. You don't have to carry the cross to be from praying. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, that's true. From a distance, a very far distance, and then you are okay. Life is too short. Don't give yourself any extra stress and everything. God will help them. God, <laughs> God will help them. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> But this is like a permanent drain, source of drain. Constant, yeah. They never want to join prayer groups because they are perfect, but that's a different matter. But okay, this is this is my approach, and I'm I've been wondering to myself whether I'm actually right. I'm very non-confrontational. Belinda always laughs at me over that. So as soon as I realize somebody is toxic for me, and usually I open my gates too wide and allow all sorts of people floating in and out of my life. So as soon as I realize it, then mine is one day I'll just get up and use the block button, have a whole long list, block, 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 block. Or <laughs> as I did recently, Delete WhatsApp after I complained about Belinda deleting WhatsApp. Then I deleted WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, the first two days after I deleted the WhatsApp, it was bliss. 
and I only restrict, set up another number for like just work. But I also realized that in doing that, it was like I was redefining my boundaries. And so I, it was, the access was limited. And there were some people that I said, if they really have to send me a message, I really want to see, no, no, I want when they send the SMS, then it tells you how much money you've spent. You know, what's up makes life too easy. Yeah. Every time they send me a message, it cost them some money because I realized it, it was too easy. So, um, but sometimes I feel that's also like running away, not dealing with issues. I just yeah. block or I, I'm, I have like 200 phone numbers. So I just change my phone number and then I now redefine who is going to get my number. It's, it's, it's a way of um, creating boundaries. And I do believe that in terms of managing, whether it's friends or is managing wasters, what trends of wasters, you need to constantly audit and redefine those boundaries. But I'm not really sure how you should go about it. I do recognize that not everybody can be um, as eccentric or as excessive as I can be, as in I'm deleting WhatsApp. Maybe it's a DNA thing since my sister did the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> but what's the best way to manage this? <laughs> I think we're all different, um, um, Charlotte. Completely. Uh, <laughs> see, like, everybody is saying that you blocked them. <laughs> see, <laughs> see this, Grace. <laughs> Even Denise, Denise has said something about you. See, Denise. this, Grace. <laughs> And the, the borders are opening. Customs has been set up where we, I will get to all of you soon. <laughs> we are redefining, we are redefining boundaries here, people. Be patient. <laughs> but is it Charlotte? We are all different. Yeah. And we are all on different journeys, different seasons. This thing you did now, or you are doing now, maybe three years ago you would have done it. Maybe you were stronger then, or you were, you were more accommodating. You take more. I think I was more accommodating. I think there's something that happens when you cross 50. You just get to the point where you're like, you know what? Forget this. Yeah, this, yeah I can't do but, this. You know, I can't do I this. Can't do it. I, 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 hey, Stella is even sending curses on me. When did thunder enter this lovely conversation? <laughs> this was a very nice conversation. <laughs> now it's thunder and fire. <laughs> okay, you Stella, double, double boundary. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think because of that season and our journeys in life, you want that's the same thing, but know where you are. And yeah. the most important thing with this show is your mental health, what makes what is important to you at that yeah. time. And the truth is that your people, and I keep on saying it, your people will come and look for you. The people that are your people. I mean, you guys left what's up, it didn't matter to me. I, anywhere you are, I find you. Yes. Thank you. Stella, time, she followed me to SMS. When, when, exactly. <laughs> when did she join her WhatsApp? She didn't even have to use it. And when they call her. So, you know, so you will find your people are your people. Don't yeah. Find. So you, what is important is your own your own mental state. What what gives you peace? Do what works life. for you. And what works for you. Yeah. And once you do that, you can find out everybody else will fall in line. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And in a few months, but it's not something that you do again. You know, so we're all, we're all, and then somebody else will say, ah, why, why did you do that, Charlotte? And if I was going through things, I did not remove myself. That's you. That's your own matter. Waste, 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 let. We'll tag them on the waste. Anybody who asks me, why did I do that? Yeah, I waste Just know. <laughs> I mean, know your boundaries. Yeah. Once we know your boundaries, we're fine. Hmm. We'll be okay, Joe. We're fine, Joe. There's only one. Okay. Only one life. Before we go into how to manage them, because there's a whole strategy to managing your your wasters and your waters, and then I, I also wanted to talk about how to do a friendship audit, because I think that particularly in this age of social media, people confuse followers with friends. Hmm. Your followers are not your friends. In fact, some followers are monitoring spirits. Followers, not all followers are friends, and you need to be very clear what they are. But we'll come to the, 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 the management. Um, but 
I want to talk, you know, there's this psalm in the Bible that I always find fascinating. The first psalm, Psalm 1, it talks about do not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the, what? Stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. And I've always wondered why, why did they pick those categories of people? Because really, it's telling you who to walk with, who to stand with, who to sit with. And that's very different. There are some people you shouldn't walk in them. There are some people you shouldn't stand with them. There are some people you shouldn't sit with them. Why that? Is it because it's like different degrees of influence or what? But I've always found it very fascinating. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing we've been speaking about. I mean, when you give the example of someone in the porch, then you move into the dining, you enter the kitchen, it's the same thing. I must know what every level of friendship, where, where it is. And they can all affect you. That, yeah, they affect you. And then some friendships or relationships, I'm trying to stay away from friendship because that's not the only thing. Yeah, some relationships, relationships, yeah. Which is work, life, everything cannot pass your foot porch it's just normal it's just okay they are great where they are keep them there and be okay with it and you know and you know so you you just need to know and that's, that's why the bible is so interesting because it says these things over and yeah. over again it's spelled it out completely do not sit in the council of the wicked yes. why do you want to go and sit with them what do you want to do what are you discussing you with them yeah them? what are you discussing with them once you know that you're in council of the wicked get up and walk away and, you know, remove, it talks yourself, it says it, it talks yourself as a friend. And even the mockers, they may not be mocking you when you're sitting with them. They are mocking other people, but when you leave and you go, they are mocking you. Yeah, so you yeah, protect yourself from, from, from all those things and, and, and be very clear about what is important to you. And, and, and once that is, then it's, it's a bit easier to manage whatever relationship you find yourself in. And even some people tell me, well, what can I do? It's not my friend. These people are in my office, they have to be, yeah. It's not everybody in your office that... Who is your friend? Right. Let me give you... I, I, like, I like what you mentioned, Charlotte. Because of the new age and social media, a lot of people um, feel to themselves that someone told me, oh, you have over 1 million followers on LinkedIn. Hey, you have so many people, your friends, they are all, when something is going on, they will support you. I said, are you joking? <coughs> I, I don't know them. How ah, are ah, they my friends? Uh, do I know them? Do they know my house? Do they know where I live? Do they, do they know what's going on? They are not your friends. It's as yeah. simple as that. It's not everybody that sends you a message on the end that is your friend. It's not everybody that likes your thing that is your friend. <clears throat> um, and you need to know who your circle is. You need to know... Define your circle. You define your tribe. Who's your yeah. tribe? Who's going to work with you? Um, <laughs> who's going to work with you during good times and even during bad times? And a lot of times during good times, who is your tribe? Your tribe is your tribe. It's as simple as that. Everybody else are people, but your tribe is your tribe. Yeah. And once you know who your tribe is, then you build on that relationship. That's that's where you accept <laughs> your energy on. This is the you management know. you're talking about. This is how you manage your yes. friends. Yeah. How you manage your tribe. Friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you manage that. Yes, your tribe. And that's when, of course, it requires a lot of energy. Uh, and it requires a lot of time and, time. and sacrifice. But because you know that there are sacrifices as well. I mean, a lot of times, I mean, look at you, I mean, something happened, you guys fly to Lagos, I fly to, and it's it worth time. Um, but because you know that there are watchers, and it makes it easier for you to sacrifice, to give, to do, and to be, yeah. and to be real as well. Because you know that regardless of what you say and do, I mean, I can, you can say some things to some people and they, they will, I mean, they will look at you and think, hmm, they will not tell you what to say, ah, ah, what to say. And after a while, you say, wait, 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 wait. well, you, you know your people. Or even something and, that, uh, even somebody you think is even a waster, they can help you get a better perspective yeah. and say, you know, this person is actually working in your interest. Because sometimes yeah, so when you're too close to it, you can't see it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, once you do that, then it makes No, as for Belinda, what she does, and she's supposed to be a water in my life. When I now identify somebody as waster and I block the person, she will now tell me why I should have blocked the person five years earlier because she had recognized the person was a waster. <laughs> That's her way of watering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it's good to it's, it's, it's good to know. Yeah. It's, it's an important conversation to have with yourself. It's an important conversation to know and to, to work with because so you don't waste your time, Charlotte. Okay, how do you how do you identify? 
Okay, so basically we're talking about doing a an audit now, a relationship audit. Yes. And it can be okay. the auntie who never has anything positive to say. It can be the person who is supposed to be your friend, but you know is less than loving. How do you audit the relationships to identify before we get into the management? Okay, let me let me say this first. Um, a lot of times when people have this conversation, Charlotte, a lot of times people go to their thing and start thinking, ah, let me remove Usai. That's why she has not spoken to me in three weeks. Let me remove this. Don't don't do that. Don't be in any hurry. Um, because we are all at, at different, I keep on mentioning journeys. We're all at different journeys. We're all at different seasons. And someone that was great to you in the last season doesn't mean that because they've not reached out in the this season makes them a, a waster. Yeah. They might be going through their own challenges. Battles, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so oh, just calm down. And, uh, and just don't, don't be in any hurry. But you, you must do a lot of self-reflection and say to yourself, what do I need to know? What kind of relationship do I want to build at this particular time in my life? And what's important to me? Um, and once you know those things, and um, what do I want to learn about myself and others? So once you do that, then it makes it a bit easier. Then you start looking out for, I mean, some things that, like, I, I'm going back to that scripture because that scripture is so helpful. And it just helps you to just pick out a few things. I mean, who loves me? What would I care about? About me, well, who, who, that they love me patiently. Who, who are who that kind to me? Kindness is such an interesting thing, eh, Charlotte. Kindness. Mm. A lot of people are not kind. They are not kind. That's true. And I'm not talking about generosity or giving things. They are just not kind people. So you have to look at. All Isn't things. kindness what really a spirit? That, Isn't it a spirit? Is it? Is a spirit that I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes as if some people should go there, you know, go and pray in the morning and ask God to give them that spirit. Yeah. Um, you have to, you have to, you have to self reflect, and then yeah. so, you know, there's some people that are just generally. I have a, 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 a group of friends, and there are two particular friends. There's one person particular. I, I, I always say to her, I don't like the way you speak to this person. It's supposed to be a very good friend of yours, but constantly rude, constantly demeaning. Why do you want to have someone that is constantly demeaning to you? Mm. So those are the things that you look out for. Of course, like anything else, Charlotte. If there are 17 things, of course there will be more. There might be 20. If you if you pick up, and when you self-reflect, and you pick up nine things that are important to you, and someone has six of those things, of course the other three, you ask yourself, I just three things to guy. Am I willing to just let it go? If it's fine, and if it's fine, then it's okay. And then sometimes also you know that you're at, at a strong point in your life where you can handle a lot of things. But when you're at a weak point, as as Greta uh, was saying, that's that's when you kind of treat yourself, build yourself again. Because no matter, even if some, some watchers there, eh, when you are going through a, a low point in your life, they might be watchers, but they are not for your particular season. And that, that's why I say don't remove them, don't block them at this at that time. But they might not But I can block them and then I can restore them later on. Yeah, but if you block them, the person might not be happy that you are well, kind to They them. didn't know I, I blocked them. They just thought I was not... <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Okay. Okay. I take that back. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> it was so... <laughs> but God knows, God knows our hearts. He sees us. Yeah. He knows us. And we must remember again that our journeys in life are all different. So it's a lot of times, high expectations of everyone. <laughs> You know, we just feel to us this person is my best friend, so she must know. It's not all the time. It's, it's it's a bit difficult. It's a lot of it's a lot to put on somebody sometimes, Charlotte. And some people, you know, we all we all raised differently as well. Some people might not even understand that they should be checking up on you because that's not what the way they were raised. But how about you know, okay, there are some people I, I, I have in my life and as soon as I see them typing <laughs> or I see a phone call from them i know that they are coming to take they need something there are some who never maybe that goes back to the kindness you're talking about they never call you unless they need something or they they want something and in fact it was one of them who triggered my recent blocking episode Block. the Charlotte, blocking that's not, your, that's, not a, that's not a watcher 
Yeah. And so why can't I block a waster? I should allow the person to come in every day and waste. I'm talking about. I'm not talking about that person. Okay. That's not, that's, that's not a word try in your life at this moment. That's not a word try. So those that ones you can block. Forever and ever they've been takers. Because sometimes I think for your own sanity, you just need to just need to okay. lock them in a room and then later on when you feel better. Otherwise, they'll push you to the point where some reaction will come. So <laughs> I still can't block that one. So why is a block button on my phone? <laughs> it's to be used. <laughs> <laughs> the sanity has to come first. <laughs> they should stay in detention for a while. After six months, we can open the door again. If you are better behaved, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ah, it, it's just too no, much. But, no, but, um, um, they're not, they're not, uh, um, they're not real. They're not fortress. Those people are wasting your time, yeah. wasting your energy, wasting. They're taking too much from you. You cannot be in a relationship that is all oh, give me, give me, give me, give me. Those yeah. are not fortress. Because once you, once you have, once you have, you're not self-seeking. You will give and you'll be given. Okay, we've lost you on the on the stream yard. I don't know why. Okay, I'm coming back on the Okay. Mm. Um so I I I don't think so I that I'm not talking about those kind of people. I'm talking about people that you know that in your different seasons of your life they've been there with They are friends but they are just having a bad day. They are having some bad yes, 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 yes. And and we're not, we're not always and some people themselves during the seasons. Um, so that kind of people, I'm saying that you have to make sure you you also reach out to and just realize that we are all in different seasons, different times, and, and stuff like that. That's what I mean. Okay. Uh, but what <clears throat> from, yes. Okay. So one of the strategies clearly is um identifying who who people are yes. in your life. Um, I yeah. doing some self reflection, knowing what you need. Um, yeah. Belinda says friends with no benefits. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, just reevaluating relationships. I, I find that the most dangerous times around me are getting to the end of the year before we enter a new year and birthday periods. I can get very oh. into a very reflective mood, and that's when yes. I yeah. Yes. I, I I basically just evaluate relationships and start redefining stuff in my head yes but um so my setting boundaries is one of the ways of managing wasters and investing in in the people who are your waters investing more energy and yes. more of that is another yes. way of managing okay when it comes to um waters what else would you suggest in terms of managing waters because you know these wasters can be so draining that you spend all your time thinking about them and not on the ones who actually add value to your life. Oh, Charlotte, God bless you, and that's yeah. why I don't like haters club and all those things. I'm, I'm just one of those people that stay. Oh, they're my haters. I'm, I'm talking out to my. Haters. I just feel to myself I'm wasting too much. You see, I, I always, I, I, I'm telling you, I, I don't feel that we have too much time. So I don't want to waste time on haters and wasters and all those. No, but for the haters, I think that their case is settled. God says when He has a banquet for you. They'll be the special guest. So just leave them, let them get their outfits ready for the banquet. You just focus on how to build the good that you can see and leave yeah. those kind of things alone. And then you know, just and, and leave them alone. So let us see when we have what how do yeah. we manage how do we manage them? Because yes. if you don't manage them well to you, you may end up losing a water because of yes. your own attitude. Yes, because a lot of times, sometimes and I, I think I mentioned one or two things when I said high expectations of human beings as well. When we feel to ourselves yeah. that this person owes me, nobody owes you. Yeah. We are both in a relationship and it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Nobody owes you. I, I don't owe you, you don't owe me. Yeah. We are, we're coming together as friends or coming together as colleagues where we want to water each other. So in watering someone, it's, you, are, you have to be conscious of that fact that I want to love this person. 
and it, it, it depends on the guy. I want to like this person. I, I don't want to be self-seeking when it concerns this person. I want to do. I don't want to make a post if, without being with uh, about yeah. this person or, or myself. You know. So look for all those scriptures as well. It's not. I don't want to be too easy, and I don't want to remember every little tiny thing because Charlotte, we are going to offend each other. It's normal. Yeah. Even our best siblings offend. We offend each other. Even your child offends you. So. Let us make sure that we're not keeping wrongs if we don't work on the wrongdoing, yeah. <laughs> yes, let's let's be careful. And then let's make an effort. You know, especially when you're in your good times. Because when you're in your good times, you have a lot more energy. And there will be good times and there will be bad times. Even the Bible says it. Stop doing good times. Yeah. I prefer to stop when things are good. That's when I have more energy. I will call, I will send something, I will do this, I will make sure. They ask you to join for this call. You ask what's going on. I can spend one hour before talking to you. So I'm storing up. Those are the things I do. Even in terms of building and put a business network, Charlotte, we know this now. Yeah. In networks, we know that you need to build. You need to put, make people realize that you are there. Even when you're not getting anything from them yet, you give and give and give. And because you know that they are watchers as well. I know that because they are watchers, your season will come in their life when it's time for them to water you. So you yeah. okay about it. That at, at this time, I'm strong enough to give more than they are giving me. And you see, uh, when you don't keep a record of, I don't care how many times Angel Care has called me. If something is going on in her life today, I call her, I don't care. I don't really, I'm not, I'm not putting it in my mind that, oh, she's called me five times when something happens. But as soon as I see something, I, I send her a message because I believe to myself, she's a watcher, I'm a watcher. So I don't really take it as, and I feel that she, some of those things I, I wrote down as Osai, because of what I want, she has given me six of those things, and I'm comfortable. Do you, you understand? So it's one of those, those are the things that we need to look out for, and we continue to build. Relationships take time. It takes energy. It takes trust. Relationship takes faith to Charlotte, to believe to yourself that this my friendship with Charlotte will last till yeah. our great grandchildren. Yeah. yeah. It, it, you have to believe it to your heart. It's faith. And once you do that, you continuously build on that, those things. You continue to look for good in that person. Because, you see, when we look for bad, Charlotte, we find bad. When we look for bad, we find bad. So as long as, and that's why I said from the beginning, we must know that the person is a watcher. Because once it's a, the person is a watcher, it's easy for you to commit. It's easy for you to do more. And be okay about it because you feel to yourself, I trust this person enough to believe that when it's time for me to be watered, Exactly but that's the thing. I also find that the true watchers do not make demands of time on you. You can go yes. two months, you haven't said anything to them. When you show up or when you need them, they will show up. So even for yes. me, for me, even a sign of a waster is those whiny friends. You know those ones that even when you pick up the phone to call them, hey, are you now remembering me? Where have you been? I'm like, hey, it's not marriage. <laughs> I was only trying to be nice here. I mean, really? <laughs> Why? Somebody can't call you again. And then you know, and rather than just, and maybe that's another thing we should know, even for, for managing your, your waters. So somebody calls you and they're checking up on you. Hey, isn't now you're now remembering me? So all this time, well, I'm like, uh, so, so entitled. Me, after that, you know you'll be blocked. <laughs> When you're in a better mood, we'll resume the friendship. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me say this, Shadow. Yeah. Well. I, 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 I totally get it. You know, I reached out to someone yesterday. I haven't spoken to the person in three months. Mm -hmm. And the person hasn't spoken to me in three months. And the first thing he said is that, um, finally, you have time for me. <laughs> so I, I had to, um, you know, take it all in. Yeah, a very good and child. I said to myself, <laughs> because for me, as I said, I, I, I mentioned from the beginning, a lot of my relationships are, are spiritual and covenant. Yeah. So I have to say to myself, there's a reason why I'm reaching out to this person. Do not let it pass. Let it so pass basically, you have to dig deep sometimes. I remember the good the person has done in the past because otherwise, yes. so <laughs> this will end your block. <laughs> and I said, to, so I said to him, I said, it doesn't matter when mm. I, I'm reaching out now. And I said, I know something is wrong. I just want to make sure that you're doing okay. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I found that, yes, he was going through really difficult times, you know. So sometimes... So it was like a little bit of self-pity. 
Yes, we might not want to talk like that, but that season that you are in, and that's why we have to be very careful with our seasons. That season you are in just makes you want to just be angry about something. And hmm. and everybody to so please do not be angry at your waters when they call you, because really it can no. set, put some waters off and you may be blocked for six months and not get any water. Wow. <laughs> There's even time, there are, there are offenses and there are, there are sanctions. You can be blocked for a week, you can be blocked for six months. <laughs> it's really forever, in my defense, it's really forever. It's really forever. <laughs> okay, so, um, okay, so since Belinda brought up the friends with benefits, I've always had a problem with that phrase. Forget the sexual connotation. But should that be our mindset in entering friendship? Friends with benefits. Or it should just be, I'm your friend. This is, I'm here for you. Because it's all, almost as if, if you're not getting any benefits, then you should end the friendship. I get the sense in which Belinda used it, as in when somebody's always taking, taking, coming, and then they take. You need to, but I'm saying in the contemporary use of the, the phrase, Friends with benefits, other than sex, of course. Well, I mean, sex is a need. So if that's what you're getting from the person, that's really entirely up to you. But should we enter friendship with that mindset of it is for benefits? To be fair, some ben no, but some benefits can be good. If it is companionship, if it is to help the person grow, if it is to give support. So I, I think, Charlotte, I think the definition that we always with benefits is very materialistic and yeah. um, self-seeking. Okay. But you see, the truth about it is that every water and everyone that is water gets a benefit. Yeah. Um. So you know, we all you know, with Christ, we have benefits. Mm -hmm. All of us. Yeah. Christ went to the cross. He died for us. It's mm -hmm. a benefit we get. You know. So, but you know, because of the way it's been set, so, yeah. With benefits, so it's very difficult to pull your pull the positive out of it. So I try not to use that word when it comes to relationships or friendships and everything. I'm very careful with the word benefits, but I know that we all get benefits. So it depends on the the con the set the the, the, the meaning that we put on the word benefits. Yeah, I get yes, you. Yes, so we have to just be careful about context. I get you. We have less than um what twenty about twenty minutes to go. It will be good to take some questions. If anyone has some questions, have we received any questions? It's just comments, no questions. Okay. We appreciate all. We've had some really great comments, though. Some nice, you know, interesting comments. Yes. yes, other than some people's own, but that's another story. <laughs> we have all sorts in our lives, and I love them all. <laughs> so, so, what do you think about the idea of a friendship audit while well, we're waiting for comments? And when I read about it, that what basically what they say is, is really about we've been talking about redefining your circle, but um, it was, I don't want to use, okay, let me not use that word. The approach was you define your own values that are important to you. So if honesty is important to you, integrity, kindness, sensitivity, you, you write all those um, values, about 10 of them, and then for the people who are supposed to be your friends, you list, basically you score them against those values. And then if they score between zero and three, you know that really you and that person, there's really no connection. I got it to a certain point. There's somebody who is no longer my friend. And it's really because of the way I saw him treating other people. As in, you drive to a place and the way he speaks to the security man at the gate. And one day I was in his house and the way he spoke to his domestic staff, I was really surprised. You know, and I was, it was, it was beyond surprise. I was shocked. I was like, but you know, in my head, I'm like, but you don't speak to people like that. Yeah. And so even though the person always treated me nicely, I started wondering, mm. but if you can treat other people like this, then that is really who you are. So I kind of put some distance um, between us. So I can get the thing about doing um, a friendship audit based on values, because if your values 
are not the same, yeah. then you can't have the kind of covenant relationship that you're talking about. Even the Bible says, can two work together unless they be agreed. Agree. Yeah. And even in marriages, I think people enter because of physical attraction or whatever, and then you now start seeing that your values are totally different. And if you don't have that value alignment, it can be very difficult. So I don't know what you think. Is it necessary to do a friendship audit? Is it necessary to evaluate people in our lives? Not just friends, based on this. Of course, if it is um, a colleague at work or a superior, you can redefine your boundaries and know that, see, I'm yeah. here for work. <laughs> Let's just focus on work and then yeah. you go home. But in your personal relationships, it may be a bit more difficult. Um, I'm Charlotte, I, I, I'm, I'm a bit worried about that because, I, I, because um, whenever I think of those kind of things, I'm always thinking of myself as well. I said, yeah. I, I feel to myself that um, do I want someone to audit me as a friend? You know, and then I'm asking myself questions. I mean, I think all of us are different. Uh, some people are very clinical about how they do things, and in my work, yeah. with some people because they're clinical, they're very concise. I want to make sure that I have this. I want to make sure I have this. Have. And I do that in terms of business when I'm looking for my networks. I'm very, very clinical. Mm. I make sure I'm looking, up the, I'm looking for people in agriculture. I go and look for them. I look for them. You know? So it's very clear. But when it comes to um, friendship and building my... I, I'm a, a bit careful. You are very accepting, though. You are very accepting of... I know that, of your friends. You, yes, you take your friends as true. they are. Yes. So that's why I'm a bit... That's why I'm, I'm saying that we're all different. Yeah. But I understand the audits. I understand why it's important that values must align. I understand why there's some people that I just will keep. They will be there, but they are not in my circle. They are not my people. Yeah. My people know their, themselves, and they might think they're my very good friends, but they are not my people. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm accepting of people because Christ is accepting of me. Yeah. But I, I'm, I don't waste time with wasters, but I accept people. But I'm also very careful about the people that I bring into my own circle. So wait, I'm, what I'm actually hearing from you is that. Even though you're saying you will not be that clinical, you've actually been that clinical. You've yes, been clinical, am, and the people who are your people, there's a values alignment. And you're very clear. Very yes. The yeah. other ones are in your circle. They are in your circle, yeah. but they are not in your tribe. Because you yes, know that there's tribe. no values alignment with them. God bless you. Yeah. So okay. that's why I'm saying that I do it, but I'm not as clinical as that. I, I know because. Charlotte, that's the reason why I'm saying we must know who we are. Yeah. Very simple. Because I know, I, I know I'm accepting, or, I mean, the word you're using, I'm very accepting of people. I can get to yeah. the that everybody's my friend. But no matter how much they try, they will not become my people. They are not my tribe. Yeah. There are some things that are fundamental that I'm looking for that I know that you cannot give me. And when I mean you cannot give me, it's not a, it's not a thing. It's a, a spirit in me that tells me that this is not my tribe. And I'm very conscious of that from the very beginning. And so we can, I can do everything with you, but there's some things I just will not sit at the same thing. Hmm. Nothing wrong with it because we are all different. Yeah. And what I'm looking for at this season in my life is not what you are looking for. And we're very clear. There's some people that I, I have all, I shall let you know, all types of friends. Yeah. And, but as I said, not everyone can sit at my table. And, and it's my table to, to, to decide who sits there or not. I think that's so and important. I'm, it's your table. Yes, you you get to decide who sits at your table, yeah. 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 So that's... Uh, someone said I'm very pretty. Thank you very much, Lady G. <laughs> oh, gosh. You are very beautiful. Not just pretty, you're beautiful. You're a beautiful soul. <laughs> Green glasses and all. <laughs> oh, wow. So, okay. I've run out of um, topics, unless you can think of anything. I think we've covered everything <laughs> on my list. <laughs> I've covered a, a lot of the things. Yeah. I think I think one of the um, someone asked me once that how do I find my own people, and I and, and it's important to have your your tribe. Yeah. Um, it, it's important to have people that come rain, come shine. You know where they are. Yeah. Yeah. You know that they are your people. I mean, there's some people that I know that I can call at any time and say, Lagos, they will get on the plane and come and meet me. Yeah. So you must know. You, you cannot, they cannot be your, somebody else's tribe. They must be your own. Yeah. And I tell people that you pick up your phone now. 
I have a thousand numbers and there. How many of them? You say I have how many friends you have said the thousand of them are my friends. That's not true. How many of them can you call and they will answer? At midnight. Not everybody that you can call at 2 a.m. Yeah. Shallow that will pick up the phone and, and listen to you. So you must know those people. You must do that in terms of reflecting first. Okay, um, someone says they have a question in the question area. Please okay. get it out first. Sorry. No, but go on, please, while we're no. digging out the question okay. here. You must be there, be willing to attend to be there for them, to attend meetups, meet them, know when to compete, you call out, you know, you know that people know that they are your people already. Yeah. So they are very clear about it. Be the first to reach out. Don't wait for them to always reach out to you. And then, of course, the most important thing, Charlotte, you must love yourself first. Nobody's going to love you if you don't love yourself. You don't think hmm. to yourself that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm better than this. I think loving yourself I and deserve, knowing yourself. I know yourself. I'm better than this. I, I, I deserve better. I deserve good people around me. Uh, so that's, those are important things. Well. Okay, I think I found the question. It says, um, I have a restrictive personality and some extremely close friends over the years, but I would love to expand my network and build new relationships. How do I do so? Oh gosh, they are talking to the experts. Expanding networks. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. <laughs> hey, you don't be you need to expand. Uh, yeah. You have to find things. You have to uh, be uh, the first thing self 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 reflection, which is what you have done. You know, you know that you need it. And uh, you have to try new things. Um, you know, go out of your comfort zone. A lot of times it's difficult for us. Yeah. I mean, I have my people and I want my, I don't want to extract new people. A lot of times they are just comfortable because it's, they are tried and they are tested. But you have to try these things. And go to the places where the people you want to meet are likely to yes, be. Yes, what kind of people that you are looking for, what kind of values do they have. Sometimes friends, friends as well, because if you feel that they are good friends with this particular person, um, you, might, you might extend that relationship to those people. Attend meetups. A lot of times people invite you, say, yeah, find mm. dress up, wear makeup, put on my wig. You know, you think about it so much and then you just sit at home. And you meet people by going to meet them. So those are things that you must do. And then also know when to compete. And yeah. A lot of times people actually send you a message, oh, do you want to meet up for something? And they just kind of call it to yourself again. So you have to say, yes, can we do this? Or sometimes you reach out as well. I said, can we meet up? And then, to, even when I say come out of your comfort zone, you can also use your comfort zone to 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 bring in new friendships. If your comfort zone is church or the mosque or you go to some particular places a lot, you can you so invite them there? Yeah. Out. Yes, look out. I mean, I, I go into meetings in church, and by the time I sit down to a meeting, sometimes you can already tell some people that when you say something, they say back with me. You guys are saying almost the same thing, and they're laughing. And then you can go the next step. Oh, you want to be talking about coffee after yeah. two or three meetings to church? You have to consciously make an effort. Yeah. Um, don't always think to yourself that they, they must make the effort. You also have to consciously expand the network and expand that friendship as well and be willing to do Very more. solid point here. Right yes. Okay, there's a question, and I was kind of expecting this. Person says, How do I get rid of a waste away family? I'm not sure we should be getting rid of it. It's almost like buy a little rat poison, you know. But, we should not be getting rid of them. Maybe it's how to manage them. <laughs> manage them. Yeah. Yes. Family is family. Now. I mean, of course, there's some people that you know that you have to cut off. I mean, they can be toxic. toxic. Family members can be toxic. They're very toxic. Yeah. Um, and there's some of them that you just have to go. I think we mentioned it at the beginning, Charlotte, where we said um, manage the situation. You know that this person is a waster. Um, so you can, you can already tell, build your boundaries. There's some people that send me messages or call me family members. I don't, I, I don't reply because then they see me as a family support. Ah, I'm calling you. I'll say, hey, ah, cross now. Ah, ah. We just laugh. I can, you can dance with them at the party. But after that, you know that they, they are going to waste your time. Just create your boundaries. Make sure that you are giving them a number that you don't know how to pick up. Um, and you know you can always... Yeah, uh, um, that's a, also another you know trick. Having that number, and that dummy number yes, for everyone. Yeah. Sure you, you put them on privacy on your, your WhatsApp when they don't see anything that is going on. Uh, because sometimes all those stories that we're putting up, I, I put up, I post a lot. They are monitoring um, spirits. Yes, a lot of people think they see a lot of things I do, but I've, I've put them under uh, privacy so they can't see my stories. Mm. So some of those people put them under privacy. Use technology, privacy. people. Technology is so <laughs> essential that you yes. to, to limit yeah. what they see and what they know about you. Uh, but I, I don't want to use the word get rid of. No. Every one of us have 
members that are wasters. We have family members that are toxic. Every one of us. Um, so let's see. Let's see how we can manage them. And you know, even with the wasters, just like the waters, um, I'm not sure getting rid of them helps. For every relationship, if you take a step back, there's always a lesson to learn. Yeah. You know, there's that famous um, quote, no man is your friend, no man is your enemy, every man is your teacher. Yeah. There's always something to learn. So maybe the lesson may even be to protect yourself better. So you just need to take the lesson yeah. and, you know, shift, redefine your boundaries, like Osai is saying, and block what they can see and what they can hear about you. There was another question yeah, from... The example I gave you about the mentor that I have, and I said yeah. this is something that happened. 10, 15 years ago, and the person is still so in, in, in part of my space. Because mm -hmm. um, I know I learned from that relationship a lot. I gained a lot from that relationship. If I, you and probably I, even learned how to be a better mentor. Yes, I also learned how to understand what it means that you have someone that is wasting, that is not good for you. Mm -hmm. And I was able to change it and turn it around um, to benefit me now. So those things are also. Um, part of your life journey yeah. and you have to just be strong enough to manage the situation and move on. Hmm. There was a question from Ifo Maggie or something, but we've lost the question. She may have to send it again. Um, can I see another question? We're running out of time. So one question just came up not too long ago, but I think we've lost it. Um, okay, I'm seeing it. She says, I have a friend who might term as a waster because she tends to be there when needed, but she doesn't think anyone else has anything good to offer and she believes she's the MVP. Hey. So what do I do? Hey. Um, hmm. Well, I don't want to hey, answer this one. <laughs> she's a wardrobe, but she feels that she's she's do all and be all and everything. And is that really a wardrobe? But is that really a wardrobe? You have to ask yourself questions as well. Because I think you should use Osai's test of um, First Corinthians thirteen and put the person's name there. Um, yes. Amma is patient, Amma is kind, Amma is not envious, keeps no record of wrongdoing. Use that test and see whether the person is really a watcher. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And then you find out that she's not. This may be a and fake friend, though, and the fake friends are even more dangerous than the fake That's watchers so cool. than um, the enemies. <clears throat> yeah. uh, you know, and I, I don't know why people believe that they are the real, they are the enemies. Nobody can do everything. You cannot mm. do everything. You cannot be the be all and end all of everything. It's impossible. I mean, no one is an island. We don't live in isolation. Everybody is, um, you know, we are, we are all there for a reason. But for somebody to believe that they are so superior to everybody yes, else, why? then even the watering is being done from MVP's most valuable players, being done from a point of condescension. It's like you are, you are down there and I'm the one giving to you. That can also be very dangerous because that may also mean that that friend doesn't want you to come up to the level where they are. That can be dangerous. Is there? Okay. But then what do you mean by to all fail that test? Which Don't test mind her. She's not a good Christian. The, the first Corinthians test. <laughs> <laughs> That's a homework for the rest of the year, to aspire to be that. <laughs> <laughs> but please, um, while we're waiting for more questions, remember to follow Thirsty Woman on um, Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. And also, our next webinar is going to be on the 4th of July, I think. I think it's on the 4th of July, yes. And it is with Michelle McKinney Hammond, and it is on birthing new things, birthing vision, birthing oh, purpose, nice. living a life of fulfillment. When the Bible says go forth and multiply, it doesn't just mean yes. producing babies. There are so many things you can birth. And so we're going to be talking with Michelle about how to birth purpose, how to birth destinies, how to birth visions on the 4th of July. So please register and join us. But um, this has been like phenomenal. I've learned so much. I've, I've actually learned that going by the test of 1 Corinthians 13, where Charlotte is supposed to be patient, I may have to go this evening and review my block list and unblock some people. I need to be patient. Mm -hmm. But, Osai, thank you. This has been phenomenal. The verse, First Corinthians chapter 13, the, the verse on um, the chapter on love. Love is patient, love is kind. So what else are you saying that to even weigh yourself as a friend, put your name in there, 
and ask you, <laughs> somebody saying I'll fail that test. I can guess who. <laughs> I've already admitted that I failed it. <laughs> so put your name in there. Charlotte is patient. Charlotte is kind. Charlotte is um, keeps no record of wrongdoing. Charlotte is not envious. That's what envy. I will pass that one. Is the patient one is the problem, but I'm going to work on it. Sorry, I promise. But um. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Sai. This has been um, very enlightening. This has been um, very elevating. I think it's, um, it's it, we're all going to be better waters and um, we'll be a bit more patient with the wasters. Even the wasters have their purpose. Even the wasters have their, they, they have their use. Yes. So thank you. I appreciate you and I love you. Thank you for being you. And remember, people, it's your table. Define who comes to that table. Ajo, I see you. Define who comes to that table. This, this side who can eat at that table. Define and refine your tribe. And be generous and be giving. Be the water to your tribe. Mm. And for the wasters, just know how to um, manage them. Um, create the boundaries. Put some distance if you have to, physical, emotional, mental whatever it is that is going to keep you sane, but just do you. But remember, in this world, there are wasters and there are waters and there's nothing you can do about them. You always have those two. So thank you, ladies. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you to all who joined us from all over the world. Really grateful, really appreciated. I look forward to seeing all of you on the 4th of July. Thank you, Osai. I love you truly. God bless you. And God make you. Thank you. I mean, Better and better. Yes, such Bye, a everyone. <laughs> Bye, people. Thank you for joining us. See you Thank next you month. So much. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>